Welcome to the celebration of Mass at Most Holy Trinity Catholic Church. We hope that our time together is worthwhile, welcoming, and prayerful. This week we are celebrating the third Sunday of Easter. In the words of St. Ignatius of Loyola, one of the most admirable effects of Holy Communion is to preserve the soul from sin and to help those who fall through weaknesses to rise again. It is much more profitable then to approach this divine sacrament with love, respect, and confidence than to remain away through the excess and fear of scrupulosity. Following our announcements for the week, please refer to the bulletin which is available at our website or in the church lobby for additional details. April 19th, spring raffle is next week and are still looking for donations for the bar, liquor, beer, wine, and desserts. You can donate the items or donate cash. Please see the board in the church foyer. You can pre-bid on three of the spring raffle live auction items that are located in the foyer. The Gulf Coast lithograph picture, Saints lithograph, signed fo football and front row seating at the 4 p.m. Christmas Eve mass. Place your bids early. The rescue project is underway and is never too late to join every Thursday evening at 6 p.m or Monday mornings at 9 a.m. Please sign up in the foyer. Quads are growing strong. We made 101 this week, and we'll be starting another. Who wants to make 102? See Janet Guillory. This week's utility winner is Guadalupe Dito. Most Holy Trinity will be helping the Boy Scouts have a fundraiser here on May 13th. Anyone interested in helping, please call the office. Please register for our online pictorial di directory. Go to our website for paperless electronic enrollment or email us for more information. There will be an Altrea for anyone who has made a cursio. Tuesday, April 16th at 7 p.m., Deacon Brazel and Charles Walden are our guests. Decaloris. Parents and Catholic school children, please turn in your school subsidy and tuition assistance forms to the church office. Tuition assistance forms are in the foyer and on our website. The men's club will hold its meeting in the parish hall April 16th at 6.30. We have anointing of the sick at 8 a.m. mass on Thursdays. The silent auction ends on the 21st and with spring cleaning going on, please be sure to drop off your donations. Father Doug will be here during the month of July to celebrate math, mass while Father Patty is in Ireland. There are sign-up sheets for lunch or dinner every day in July in the foyer. Please welcome him. We are selling Father Patty's book of jokes for $20 in the foyer to benefit St. Stephen's after mass. <laughs> Got to get one of those. The Diamond Head Fire Department will be here Monday, April 29th at 6 p.m. to demonstrate the use of our new defibrillators. All are welcome to sign up in the foyer for this training. Easter lilies are available for pickup after mass for everyone who contributed. Facilitators are needed for the upcoming Eucharistic revivals. A brief training will be provided Please see the flyers in the foyer for more information. Deacon Ed will be holding a one-hour introduction session to describe a new evangelization concept on Saturday, April 27th, starting at 10 a.m. in the parish hall. We will now pray the Most Holy Trinity Discipleship Prayer. Let us pray. All-powerful and all-merciful Father, you have created all things, and you have made your Son, Jesus Christ, the foundation of your kingdom. It is your desire for everyone to know and love you. As Jesus called ordinary men to be his apostles, he continues to call each of us to be his disciples. May we respond to your call of discipleship, Fill us with the grace of the Holy Spirit. Guide us as we follow in Jesus' footsteps and grow your church with love and compassion so that we may contribute to the spread of the kingdom of Christ, your Son. Amen. 
If you are a visitor or new to our parish, you are invited to stand. Please let's welcome them. Anybody new? Please stand. When Jesus walked among us, he never met a stranger. He always welcomed us and embraced everyone. Please take a moment now to greet and introduce yourselves to those around you and get to know one another and ask if he or she has a special need that you could pray for at this time in Mass. Please stand when Jesus, excuse me, to prepare ourselves to worship God, to sanctify our lives, and to build up the body of Christ. Let us now observe a moment of silence. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Lovely to see you all this beautiful afternoon. And this evening's Mass has been offered for Warren Riso, Warren Schmuck, Mary Vin Patty, Carol Vogelin, William Poor, Marie Laurent. And lots of sick people have requested special prayer. So as we come to pray, the disciples recognized Jesus in the breaking of bread. Let us pray that we can recognize Jesus in the Holy Eucharist and receive him body, blood, soul, and divinity with faith and thanksgiving. Let's begin by calling to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We, we give, give you thanks for your great glory. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, our God, God Almighty Father, Father, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Christ. Son, Lord, Lord God, God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, Father. you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Marie Laurent, William Poor, Carol Bogelin, Mary Benfatti, Alan Schmuck, Warren Riso.
May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he has announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. 
But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. For they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything that was written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, good afternoon, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. This is the third Sunday of Easter for year B. We heard St. Luke's account of one of the resurrection appearances of Christ. Although we are in year B, because we are in the Easter season, we are not going to be hearing from Mark. And that's because Mark gives us about eight verses that he dedicates to the discovery of the empty tomb on Sunday morning and no more. So our reading comes from Luke's gospel. It is the episode that follows that famous account of Jesus appearing to the disciples on the road to Emmaus. And it is the Lord appearing to them and proving to them that he is actually risen from the dead and that he is not a ghost. The context of this appearance of the risen Christ is shortly after the revelation of himself to the two disciples on the road to the Emmaus, a story where he takes bread, blesses it, breaks it, and then disappears. And it is in the breaking of the bread that they recognize him. So this is the subsequent appearance of Jesus. And in this case, Jesus appears to the disciples as standing among them, and he says... Peace be with you, which is the same thing we've seen in John's gospel. His standard greeting as the resurrected Christ is peace be with you or peace to you, shalom in Hebrew. But of course, 
The disciples are not at peace. They are frightened. They think they're seeing a ghost of, of their deceased Lord and Master. Who wouldn't be afraid? Think about where they are. It's probably sometime on Monday or maybe late Sunday night, depending on how fast those two from Emmaus got back to Jerusalem. Just a few days prior, they witnessed Jesus being arrested. They knew that he was beaten, crucified, died, and was buried. Mary Magdalene now says she saw him. The tomb is empty. Now they hear from the two who saw Jesus in Emmaus. Their heads had to be spinning. Also, throw on top of that their fear about what happened to Jesus that could easily happen to them. Now, I'm not a psychiatrist, but that seems like a pretty good recipe for a group panic attack. Luke says they were talking about the Emmaus event, and boom, Jesus is standing in their midst. Of course, they were frightened. Of course, they thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus' words, while assuring, are almost funny. Why are you troubled? And why do you question where questionings rising in your heart? Who wouldn't be troubled? Who wouldn't be questioning? Questioning their eyes, questioning even their sanity. Yet this event, <coughs> despite everything that was swirling around it, is one of the most transformative moments in our faith. Jesus reveals his resurrected body to the apostles. As St. Paul says, without the re resurrection, our faith is in vain. It is futile. It is an interesting philosophical exercise. In order to allay their fears and also to prove to him that he is not a spirit, he shows them his hands and his feet. What is he doing when he shows them his hands and his feet? He's giving them evidence of his crucifixion, showing those wounds in, in his hands and his feet. He wants everyone to see that not only does he have a body, but it is that same body that was crucified on Good Friday. And in do so, doing so, Jesus is also dispelling some of the first century misunderstandings of life after death. The Jewish group known as the Sadducees believed that your soul just stopped existing after death. They believed in a kind of annihilation. They did not believe in life after death, or what we would call the immortality of the soul. Another group, the Pharisees, believed in the immortality of the soul and the resurrection of the body. But they believed that your soul, went to, when it went on to death, would be reunited with your body on the last day, the final judgment, at the beginning of the new creation, what they called the world to come. But there were still others who believed in what we would call reincarnation. In other words, that somebody's soul could leave their body and then come back in a different person's body. And we actually see this in the, in the gospel with King Herod after John is executed, and Jesus begins his preaching and teaching. Herod thinks that it is John the Baptist come back from the dead in the figure of Jesus, that John's spirit is now living in Jesus. So what Jesus is doing is distinguishing all of those ideas. This is not just the immortality of the soul. It's not just a ghost appearing to them, like maybe a loved one in a dream or something like that. It is also not a reincarnation. His soul going into someone else's body, it is the resurrection. It is along the lines of the view of the Pharisees that the soul and the body have been reunited after death. The difference is it didn't take until the last day for Jesus' resurrection to take place. His resurrection instead of happening at the end of time has now happened in the middle of time. His soul and his body have been reunited in a new state, in a new form, a glorified state where he can appear wherever he wants to, wherever he, where he can pass through walls and veil his appearance. That's the characteristics, the features, the nature of Jesus' resurrected body. And Jesus does something else very important. In order to 
prove to him that the body that he has is not just the same body, but is a real body, a real earthly body. He says, do you have anything to eat? They give him a piece of fish. He took it and ate it before him. This is extremely important because he says to them, look, I have a body. Touch me. I have flesh and bones. A ghost and a spirit does not have flesh and bones. Jesus is trying to reveal to the disciples in this resurrection appearance the nature of his risen body as a real body. Jesus also recalls his words to them that he told them in advance that this would happen. Not only did he tell them, but it was written about him. It was written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms. And Jesus opens their minds to understanding scripture and all things concerning himself. What Jesus is doing is saying to the apostles, not only did I tell you I was going to die and rise again, but the scriptures tell you, the law, the prophets, the Psalms, they all spoke of this. They all prophesied this. They all prefigured this, that he would suffer, he would rise on the third day, and that repentance and the forgiveness of sins should be preached to all nations. Jesus opened their minds to understand in the scriptures all things concerning themselves, which is a great lesson for us. It was by God's grace that the apostles came to understand scripture. Whenever you read the Bible, don't just open up the Bible and start reading and studying on your own power. Pray before you read scripture. Pray whenever you open the scriptures. Because if they are really what the church claims they are, namely divinely inspired, then you need God's help to see the full depth of their meaning, especially the prophetic meanings of the Old Testament. My brothers and sisters, our gospel today from St. Luke has given us two crucial points to reflect upon. First is that the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not just about the immortality of our souls after, after death. It is about the resurrection of our bodies. It is about our unification of body and soul for all eternity. That is what Jesus is trying to tell us in this scripture reading. And so let us reflect upon this. Let us take this to heart and know that our bodies and our souls will come together in our resurrection, not for one day, not for one year, not for one month, but for all eternity. Amen. Please stand now and let us profess our faith in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Do so with as much volume and enthusiasm as you can. I believe in one God. For all ages, God from Gaia, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Hey, for us men, for our salvation, came down. He will come again, Lord, to judge the living and the dead, and it's the kingdom of heaven and the land. May even the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, will proceed from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, and the Lord of the Lord, who has blessed the truth of the Father. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I love all the ways of the resurrection of the dead. Life the Amen. Let us pray for Mary Ben Fatty, Carol Bogolan, William Poor, Marie Laurent, Warren Riso, Alan Schmuck, for all our sick, for those who have asked for special prayers, 
for peace in our world, let us pray. That those who are received in the church at Easter Vigil may grow ever stronger in their faith and be powerful witnesses of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for civil leaders and lawmakers, that the light of wisdom and truth of Jesus Christ illumine their decisions and strengthen them to pursue truth and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that those in our parish considering joining the Eucharistic Revival will register now for one of these programs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the success of our spring raffle, which will help support the church's financial stability, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends and all the departed, that they may be gathered into the eternal joy of their heavenly home, especially Betty Van Cleve. May they rest in the peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for all your blessings. We thank you especially for the gift of the Eucharist. May we always recognize you in the breaking of bread. You are Christ our Lord. Amen. Second collection this weekend is for long-term maintenance and insurance foundation. Second collection next weekend is also for long-term maintenance and insurance foundation. And I would let the little children come up, but the church isn't here. Oh, yeah, there it is. I didn't miss it. Okay. May God's little children come forward with donations that we distributed by the parish outreach ministry to the less fortunate in our community. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of Christ and Church. The praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of our exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, Lord. But in this time of all, to Lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death. And in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
Tonight, a quote from St. Alphonsus Liguri, Bishop and Doctor of our Church, he said, Good friends find pleasure in one another's company. Let us know pleasure in the company of our best friend Jesus, a friend who can do anything for us, a friend who loves us beyond measure. Here in the Blessed Sacrament, we can talk to him straight from the heart. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Louis, our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> Please look at the crucifix now. That's how much God loves us. So let us pray from the heart as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity 
in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Please stand, bow your heads, and pray in silence. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a minute. First off, please give a big, big hand of thanks to our wonderful choir who do a beautiful job each week for us. Now we'll put them to work in a minute. We Wesley and KK Walker are here, they're new grandparents and they're celebrating a wedding anniversary today. I, I, I don't know what one it is, but they told me the hundred, so it probably feels like that, you know. So, so that sounds good to me. Uh, uh, anybody else with a birthday or anniversary today? I know Diane Allen has a birthday. Martha, Martha, a birthday. Brian, very good. Brian and Martha, birthday also. Anybody else? Did I, did I miss somebody? Oh, anniversary, sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> very, I should remember that, okay. <laughs> All righty. Very good. Uh, the beaches anniversary. Anybody else with a birthday or anniversary? Did I miss any hand? Okay, let's sing happy birthday, happy anniversary, please. As most of you know, I'm building two houses at the moment down at Our Lady of Fatima for retired priests. We've been working on that project for a while, but they're coming along really good. They're nearly finished. So two weeks from today, I'm looking for some slave labor. I'm looking for people to help me lay sod. We have 18 pallets of sod. So about 8 o'clock in the morning to about 12, well, anyone that can be there, please come and be ready to go to work to lay some sod on the 27th. Um, Got a brand new joke book. <laughs> um, I, I collect emails, I get loads of emails and we had them printed. This is the second time I've done this. I did this one time before in my former parish and they sold like that. So we have a limited number of them, they're 20 bucks to benefit St. Stephen's Community Culture Center. They're on sale tonight. If you want one, please get them while they last. Limited number, as I say. We had a fantastic golf tournament today, brilliant, brilliant weather. Many of you here worked it, but the organizers of everything, Joe and Cheryl Doyle. Everybody that was involved, please give a big, big hand of time. And Friday night, we have our big spring raffle, and thankfully, all the tickets are gone. So we're looking forward to a great party and a great time on Friday night. Um, this coming summer, I will be uh, going to Ireland in July, and I have Father Douglas coming to take my place. He's our local parish priest. He, grew, he was born in Nigeria. He's excellent English. He's a really nice guy. But anyway, while he's here, we want to feed him well, so he'll come back again. So we need you all to sign up to take him to lunch or to dinner for the month of July. There's a sign up in the foyer. So make sure you take a date and invite Father Douglas to, um, to, to lunch. We've got new defibrillators for our church, and we're going to have training. And there's a sign up for the training. It'll be done by the Diamond Head Fire Department. So uh, it's great that we have these devices now, but we need as many people trained as possible, especially if you have a background in healthcare. It'd be great to get trained on our defibrillators. Uh, most of you, I think, by now have heard that Betty Van Cleve died last night, and her funeral will be this coming Saturday at 11. And we're doing a sign-up for the Eucharistic Revival. We had two already, and they were very, very successful. We we're going to have one more weekend one, uh, May the 18th and 19th, and then we're going to have two seven-week periods, beginning May 2nd. So please sign up for the Eucharistic Revival. It's a great chance to get to better understand our greatest prayer. And I'd like to finish with the first joke in the book. I'm just going to do about uh, less than half it. It's the one-liners on, uh, on people, okay? Some people are kind, polite, and sweet-spirited until you try to sit in their pew. <laughs> it's easier to preach 10 sermons than it is to live one. Don't wait for six strong men to carry you to church. 
God promises a safe landing, not a calm passage. I remember being able to get up without making sound, sound effects. I don't mean to interrupt people. I just randomly remember things and get really excited. When I ask for directions, please don't use words like east or north. <laughs> I never make the same mistake twice. I do it like five or six times, you know, to make sure. <laughs> if we expire when we die, shouldn't we inspire while we live? The definition of camping, where you spend a small fortune to live like a homeless person. <laughs> and finally, does anyone know which passage in the Bible explains how to turn water into wine? Just asking for a friend. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.